on camera. Okay. Today is September 7, 2017. My name is Tony Hilliard. I'm a volunteer at the Atlanta History Center, and with me is Peggy Hilliard, another volunteer, and Sue Verhoff, the Director of Oral History and Genealogy at the Atlanta History Center in Atlanta, Georgia. We're here today to record the oral history of Mr. Dominic Giovanasso, who served in the U.S. Army during World War II. Mr. Giovanasso's oral history is being recorded for the Library of Congress Veterans History Project. We're honored to have you with us today, Mr. Giovanasso, and thank you for participating. Would you begin by telling us your full name and where you live? Uh, Dominic Charles Giovanasso, Dunwoody, Georgia. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about your early years, your early life? I sure can. I was born on January 23rd, 1922, in a town named Portogiola in Reggio Calabria in Italy. Uh, we lived there with my mother and sister uh, for the, the, my set first seven years of my life. Uh, we lived in a three-room uh, house, uh, no water, uh, no gas, no electricity. Uh, we had uh, cooked uh, over an open fire. We had an outside oven. Uh, the water uh, came from a, a mountainside where there was a little lagoon or where she washed clothes. She got watered for us to drink and use, and she carried this water on top of her head. Uh, we, uh, uh, I went to school up to the third grade. Uh, well, I was ready to go to the third grade. Uh, my father had uh, left, uh, I imagine, after my sister was born. She's a, a year younger than I, and I never knew him uh, until we uh, came to uh, the United States. Uh, I enjoyed being there uh, and re remember very uh, quite a bit about it. But when my wife and I uh, went there about 25 years ago, the place was much smaller than I thought. And uh, I thought we had a big plateau overlooking this little city uh, or town of about 1,100 people. Uh, but uh, it was much different. The house is still there. Uh, and uh, we also visited my aunt uh, who lived there. And I thought she was a real tall woman, but she was shorter than my wife. She was, uh, uh, I remember uh, the only thing that I remember that out of the ordinary is that we got our first snow there in my seven years, and I made a great big ball of snow, and it lasted for about four days. Okay. Uh, 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 when I was uh, about seven years old, with my mother, oh, I, there was a thing I missed. And I want, uh, once a year, uh, she, the, she would buy a, a hog, and uh, uh, the neighbors would come there, and they would uh, butcher the hog and make s certain parts of it. And uh, they used every part, of it, uh, including the blood, to make like pies or everything. And they they stored it in uh, uh, lard because they had no refrigeration. And uh, they used every part of it. I think they even made soap, but I, I, it's hard for me to believe that maybe, but I guess they did. Uh, so was your family a large family? Just my sister and I and my mother. I mean, did were the, did you have uncles and aunts in the area? Oh, yeah. My aunt was there, and my grandparents uh, uh, lived 
very near us. In fact, uh, uh, her, their house, when we went there, their house was messy. It was just rubble. Okay. But I remember I used to ride their mule. They had a mule. I, had, I would ride from their house to our house. Uh, was, my mother's side was the Martellis, which is a popular name in that area. And there was a lot of Martellis around there. We met some of them when, when my uh, wife and I went there, like I said, around 25 years ago. Sir, uh, I don't know if he mentioned, but he was prisoner of war. Well, okay. Ellie, we'll, we'll, we'll please. To <laughs> we'll get to it. That's okay. Go ahead. Uh, well, by getting back to where I was, uh, we, uh, uh, my mother uh, packed a, all, all that we owned and said that we were going to the United States uh, to live with my, with my uh, father, who was there with uh, two brothers and my, uh, uh, my uh, aunt's husband. They lived. In fact, my father had already re obtained his citizenship papers. And when we arrived in the, in the States, uh, my sister and I became automatically citizens of the United States. Where was your father in the United States when you arrived? In, in Ravenna, Ohio. Okay. Uh, that it's a, there's a city in Italy named Ravenna, okay. so I, this, this guy, I guess, had been to Ravenna and liked it, and uh, he... Uh, he named it Ravenna, Ohio. In fact, there was a Ravenna, Italy, where and when we, my sister, when she was there, she went to see the city. And we have some pictures. And I got a vase that she said, it says, uh, Ricordo de Giovanazzo, Italy. Anyhow, we went to Naples, boarded a boat, and took about seven, eight days, uh, and I, I'm not sure whether we landed in Philadelphia, but I thought it was Ellis Island before that, but I, you, you go check the records and they weren't accepting anybody in 1930. So we get, went from there by train to Ravenna, and uh, my father had built uh, a new house there, uh, like th for three thousand dollars. It was the newest house on the street. Could you speak any English when you arrived? Not a word. And speaking of, of uh, speaking of that, uh, when we uh, we got there in in August of nineteen thirty, and in September, I started school, first grade again. I, I got missed, and we, we didn't know any English at all, except a little bit we had picked up with the neighbors. And uh, uh, he lost it uh, during the Big Depression because he couldn't even uh, pay f uh, the interest. All right. So we lost that and moved to another one. Uh, when, uh, I, I, I was, when I was in the fifth grade, uh, they wanted to, to uh, advance me a grade, and my father just thought I would uh, lose something by, okay. so he he wouldn't let him lose the grade. So I was uh, in my, my class about two years older than the rest of the people, but. We, we learned, I learned uh, English uh, in no time at all. Good. Um, how, how do you like that? <laughs> perfect timing. Um, was it... What were your, your schoolmates like? Did they accept you? I mean, even you had difficulty with English. Did you have any problems with? Well, 
I don't think so, but I, I, I always uh, uh, thought that some inferiority because I was to know the English and I came from Italy. And at that time, uh, Italians were not their favorite. Uh, they, if we even had uh, the, uh, what do they call the one with the white sheets? Oh, Ku Klux Klan? They, they would march there uh, really? in our little town of Ravenna. And uh, uh, I'm sure the, the, the Dagos and other yeah, names of that time uh, was not uncommon. But uh, uh, after a while, the things... Once folks got to know you, things got, yes, it got yeah. better. So did you go to, did you go to high school? In yeah, yes, uh, Ravenna High School. Uh, I was uh, uh, about the eleventh of in our, our group, uh, and when I s signed up uh, in the ninth grade, they let you sign, take the courses you wanted to, and I signed up for. Uh, I figured, well, I'll be a mechanic or something like yeah. that. In fact, I think at one time I wanted to be a forest ranger. Anyhow, my principal. I uh, crossed everything out and gave me some college courses I was supposed to take, which I thank them even today. Uh, I graduated from there in 1942, and uh, I tried to get a job. We had a big arsenal that they were building there, uh, making ammunition, and they were building it. They had about 10,000 people working there in this little town. Uh, and uh, uh, they uh, rejected my application, and I figured well, that's because I was Italian. And I, I might be wrong or not. Anyhow, I got a job for a short period of time in this woolen mill, uh, and uh, I wanted to join the Navy, and my mother didn't like water. So she talked me out of it, and uh, so I, uh, I waited till I was drafted. So in November of 1930, uh, uh, but I think it was around November 30th, I was drafted, and I went down to Columbus, uh, where I was uh, 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 inducted. Yeah. And uh, I, they asked me what I wanted to, to, to do, to join. And I said, well, I want to be the, in the Air Force, but I don't want to be flying any planes. So we wake up a couple of days later, and they, they put us on a train. And uh, I wake up, and we're in Colorado Springs, Colorado. 89th Infantry Division. I figured they figured I get I was safe, and anyhow I I was with the 89th Infantry for about four months or so. I got a PFC and a corporal during that time, but anyhow uh, they come and tell me we're re transferring you to the Light Infantry Division that's coming here, and uh, the, uh, the, the 71st Infantry, a light infantry, uh, they had mules and that type of thing. And one of the things that we did while I was with them is that we climbed Cheyenne Mountain. If you're familiar with Colorado Springs, it's right near where the camp was. and. Uh, we, it was, so we had full field pack, and we went up to this path, and we walked for about two minutes, and then we rested. And uh, that was an exciting thing, and we finally reached the top. Uh, uh, while I was with the 71st uh, Division, uh, they uh, asked me if I would like 
to go to lieutenant school or I could go uh, to uh, engineering, pre-engineering school. Well, I had already tired of uh, being an infantry, so I said, well, I'll go to, uh, to uh, uh, engineering school. So they sent me and I went to uh, uh, University of South Dakota. And after, we were there for about a, a month, not a month, a, a semester, when uh, uh, previous to this, uh, a D-Day had come, and they, 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 I guess they lost a lot of people, and they needed replacements. So everybody that was taking these ASTP courses uh, got sent to... Back to the infantry? Uh, back in the infantry, not where I came from, but the 97th Infantry Division and, uh, and uh, uh, went through this uh, course again. And uh, uh, I don't know if we, I was there that, that long, but the whole division was sent to uh, California and uh, we were supposed to take amphibious training. And uh, uh, while, uh, while we were there, they, they told us, well, you, you're, you're going overseas. They, left, they picked out 11 out of our company, the Fox Company. And uh, we were in khaki. I have a picture out in the hall here that they sent to my parents and uh, the, on the whole company, Fox Company. And we're in khakis and they're in a, Something. So I figured, well, we're going to go to Japan or something. Got a drink of water. Oh, yeah. the well, I picked a good time. Yeah. Okay. Hey, stop the camera. Just on camera. Oh, you are. Okay. Okay. But that was not the case. We were camping. New Jersey, and uh, we were there a couple of days, and we boarded a, a ship, the Mauritania. Uh, I guess it was an English ship, and uh, we were the last ones to get on board, and there was no place to put us, so we we slept in the uh, kitchen, not the kitchen, the dining room. Okay. And I, I served coffee. Uh, it was a, like a seven-day trip, and uh, I never got really sick, but uh, it was to the point where I didn't eat very much. Anyhow, and you got queasy. Yeah. So uh, let me. How what, did you? Did they ever explain to you why only eleven of you went east? What? Well, I guess that uh, from the different companies they picked out. Okay. certain amount of people. And I think that most of us were uh, at the college uh, like at the ASTP level. And I, I, I'm not sure, I don't know why they picked us. I had so much training that... Uh, Didn't need anymore. I don't know. Get rid of us. <laughs> Anyhow, we, uh, we landed in Liverpool, okay. uh, England. And we were there uh, about a couple of weeks or so. The, the coldest place that I've ever been. You take a shower like out in the middle of winter. It, it was cold. Uh, but from there, we uh, uh, we went on, put on uh, uh, small ships, uh, and we went to. Uh, Omaha Beach. Now, the division that I was being sent to was at Utah Beach, but the people get mixed up and say, no, it wasn't. But we landed at Omaha Beach much later than, than the original. And uh, we, uh, we joined, uh, I was assigned uh, to uh, uh, 
Fox Company again. So I went from one Fox Company to another Fox Company. And one of the guys that uh, was with us on the 97th was in G Company. And uh, just uh, to get a little bit of what I'm talking about later, uh, uh, he wrote a book, G Company's War, and uh, I'm listed on there about seven or eight times because really? we were kind of friends. Uh, and it, if anybody wants to really know my experience during this period of time, uh, if they got that by that G is Company's that War. Is that the book? This is, yeah, this yes. is the book. Hold it up so we can see. <clears throat> He died about a couple of months ago. Okay. Uh, where was I? So we we, uh, we were in, in, in different uh, companies. Uh, sh shortly after we got there, uh, we uh, were subjected uh, using a, a, a common term, I guess. Uh, to our first battle, it was Montcourt Woods. It was one of the, the uh, fairly largest and, and serious uh, encounters that we had. And I, I remember you know, coming down this road and there was bodies on each side of the road. And they were, the color was black. And I figure, uh, you know, where do these black people come from? And later on, I found out that these were not black. It was just laying there for this long period of time, and your body turns black. Anyhow, we got into this woods, uh, and uh, uh, we, we started digging foxholes. And before we, we uh, the area was muddy. Uh, before we could f f get in any foxhole, uh, enemy fire started, and the, the little saplings on each side, they would just be falling over. And I was amazed. That it, I wasn't really scared. I, I think even at other times, I, I wasn't. Was not a, for another some reason. I was not as scared, but uh, evidently I, I was disturbed. Uh, my gun uh, got in the mud, and uh, uh, through through the, the experience that I had with putting the gun together, I was able to put it together. But uh, we we. Uh, uh, I uh, got through that all right uh, and uh, finally reached our objective. Uh, so what time frame was this? What what year? In, uh, well, it was right after I, when I, when I, after I got there. Was it 43? 40, 43, yeah. Okay. I'm sure it was. I, mean, I, could, I didn't put that down. Okay. Uh, uh, our, our next battle uh, was uh, 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 involved the trees again, and uh, uh, this time uh, we were uh, digging a foxhole, and uh, uh, these screaming mimes uh, would would come down and it would explode when they hit the trees, and. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, uh, as soon as I heard this uh, shot, I uh, ran for my for my the, uh, the foxhole, and then we were buddies. There were two people, and uh, I got there before he did, and he got a shot and a shrapnel in his leg. Uh, uh, it was. Uh, one of my lucky experiences, and again, for some reason or other, 
I, I, I wasn't afraid. I, I then, you know, uh, uh, probably again it's because of the training you had. So how old were you at this point? I was 21. Okay. Yeah, you're an old guy. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the other expenses that we went were the Sahara Offensive in Lorraine. I'm, I'm skipping into these things and pointing out the little things that affected me only. Anyhow, this was a plane. It wasn't the woods. Uh, and uh, the, the, it was, uh, we were facing some tanks and, and uh, somebody in the back called for artillery uh, uh, to be uh, shot at the tanks. And it happened to be that there was a ditch nearby. And I got into this ditch and the, the shells, our shells, would hit sometimes on this side where the tanks were and sometimes on this side where, where we were. And again, uh, that uh, was one, again, one of my lucky things uh, that I was near that big uh, ditch. Uh, when we, while we were there, we got relieved uh, they said, we're going to relieve you, and we're we going to send you to Mets for uh, uh, recreation. And, and, and that when, when, uh, when we left our, our position, we went behind this, uh, it was an embankment, and they came up to me and said, uh, they had a guy with them, and he said, you're going to be our bazooka man. Uh, and I don't remember ever shooting a bazooka. And he, uh, this guy gave me this bazooka, which is a uh, package in two pieces. Uh, he, I guess, uh, he had uh, frozen feet or something and was being <coughs> sent to England. Okay. So, I, I'm the bazooka man. So the, you're the, yeah. the anti-tank guy there. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so we went to Mets, and uh, we start, uh, they put, I guess it was a former uh, camp or something for some of the Germans. Uh, and we cleaned up the place uh, and, uh, for about two days. Well, uh, we, after two days, they came to us and said, uh, we've had trouble up and, and uh, uh, the, uh, 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 battle, uh, not the battle of the bulge. Yeah, I'm mixing up again. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Germans had their offensive in Luxembourg and in that area. And well, you, you're going to go and, and relieve or try to, uh, to stop the Germans. And we had, they formed us into a task force Hamilton, which had tanks and uh, uh, we had part of our regiment, the 328th Regiment. And uh, uh, we, I remember walking beside these tanks as we gone up to to the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, uh, we, we, uh, the uh, incident that I'd like to uh, uh, talk about is uh, there was, the ground is full of snow. We're in uh, regular uniform and the Germans are in white and uh, uh, they, they, we reached this uh, uh, area where we couldn't go any further. And uh, uh, I guess the, the, uh, I didn't know this by myself, but I read it that our Captain Seeley, our captain, uh, uh, they had uh, shot at one of our tanks nearby 
and had knocked him down to the ground. He and uh, he he was wasn't uh, hurt or anything. Anyhow, they had trouble advancing. So, uh, and the, the things that they tried uh, weren't working. So he said to me, Dominic, uh, go over here and shoot at that house down there. So, you know, I do what my captain says. You know, we go up, climb up there, and then uh, it's all snow, and we're silhouetting against the sky, I guess. And I took one shot at this thing, and supposedly I hit it, or I scared him away, and this allowed us to, to make an advancement. Uh, and I, in many of these, I think uh, Yank Magazine first reported this incident, and it was picked up by a lot of people, and I, I, including the book here and, and other articles that I have. In fact, one, one of my friends from Minnesota sent me a copy of it. And uh, uh, the, that night, we, we, we were advancing our company, and uh, somehow or other, we, we got, there was a standoff, and uh, I, I was, uh, 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 beside a hedge, and while I was there, at, this is at night, the enemy uh, troops were going by, and they, uh, after they got by, I, I got up, and it, it, about five or six more guys in our company uh, went there. So they said, well, what should we do? So. I think I was a corporal at that time. I felt, oh, well, I, I got to lead these. So uh, I was just guessing. We, so we started going back up this uh, small hill. And uh, as we were about halfway up to our right, about 100 yards away, some troops I knew they were in ours because they were wearing white. Started coming in a column all the way down, and we didn't move. And they finally got out, and uh, we went over the wood, over the hill, and joined our company again. This was Christmas Eve. Really? That all happened. Reason to celebrate. Yeah, I guess a celebration. And, uh, from. Uh, from there, we uh, uh, went to, let's see what was it, Battle of Bowling. Oh, it's, uh, we went to Sarlatran. This was in the Siegfried Line. Uh, and uh, we, we, it was the first battle that I was in where you had buildings, and we were in this one building that had, had, had been had half destroyed, but it had a basement, and 11 of us uh, were down in this basement, and uh, uh, we, we had, there was supposedly at one time, there was a, a, a window or an exit, but it had been blocked up, Anyhow, uh, before I got uh, uh, daylight, they asked me to go to our company quarters and pick up some ammunition, some explosives, and that we were going to use the coming day. So I and this buddy of mine went back there and we got the explosive and uh, started coming back. And he wanted to stop and have breakfast there. I said, no, we got to get back before it gets daylight. 
we did. And uh, when we, after, shortly after we got back, something hit the rest of the building that we were in and knocked it down. And we were trapped in the, in the basement. Well, after a few minutes, we looked and see we could, uh, couldn't get to see a way out. Uh, anyhow, uh, some uh, German troops had come down there and told us to come out. And uh, uh, we were afraid to go out. But they threw down some smoke, smoke bombs. And we had gas masks, but nobody had the gas masks on. Anyhow, they said, come on, we figure if this doesn't get us out, they're probably throwing an explosive there. And we got explosives already. So this uh, radio man that we had, brave guy, I guess, he, he came out and uh, we said, well, they didn't do anything to him. So the rest of us got out. And they marched us back a couple hundred yards and they lined us up, and we figured, well, now they're going to shoot us. And they did. They brought some, uh, uh, I can't think of the name, uh, something to put, to, to put in our mouth and, and uh, chew on so because of the smoke, to relieve the smoke. Okay. Anyhow, uh, so they didn't shoot us. They put us in trains, and uh, uh, I don't know how far we went uh, before we uh, joined uh, other troops, uh, other prisoners. Uh, there was Russians there and there, and then Indians and everything. And uh, we, we never stayed in the camp, because I guess this was very close to the end of the war. And we uh, marched every day, practically about 12 to 15 kilometers. Uh, I think once we stayed at a place where we had a shower uh, and we had uh, um, some breakfast uh, that different than what a normal breakfast was, which was uh, this uh, black bread or brown bread. Uh, and uh, uh, lousy coffee, whatever. Uh, we, uh, our, f our other food was maybe some kind of soup that they would make, uh, like potato soup. And whoever made that potato soup uh, then take out the, the uh, rotten ones. I guess the, 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 the way they saved uh, potatoes and stuff like that is to bury them and over the winter and uh, so so uh, we got used to it we would eat anything they gave us which wasn't much but I didn't, uh, anyhow we we walked uh, almost six seven hundred miles total during our period of time uh, so they, they walk you back into Germany? They walk us towards the Russians. Oh, okay. And, and uh, I guess the Russians, they were working this way. And sometimes at night we would see uh, uh, combat fire, and we figured, well, you know, they're, they're coming at us. Uh, we went, uh, one of the member the things that's, stuck in my mind is that we were by a lake once and uh, these Indian soldiers, prisoners, were in the lake because you, you never had a bath and they were washing up and they, the guards told them to come out. Uh, I don't know what the, what the word was, were Rosmitten or something to, to that effect. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, they wouldn't do it. They didn't understand him, so they shot him. And then the Indians went and got, there was a fences with posts and built up a, a, a pier for the 
and they put the, the soldier on there and, and burned. burned them. That, 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 that didn't strike them very much. Yeah, but, but otherwise, they treated it as pretty good, uh, although we were afraid of, of, the, of the, some of the guards that were there. Uh, 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 trying to figure out, well, I think one time one of my buddies uh, didn't do something and they would hit him with a butt of their, but otherwise we were pretty safe. Uh, we were uh, close to the end of the war. Uh, we woke up one morning and all our guards were gone. Uh, except one guy, and our third, the, uh, the, the, the uh, 30, the, the, not the 30, the Black Cat Division, Armored Division was there, and uh, they uh, sort of rescued us. We also noticed that uh, uh, on the road below, there was uh, wagons, the Germans uh, were, didn't have any gasoline, I guess, and they were, were using wagons. Is there, uh, excuse me another minute. Yeah, okay. My mouth gets dry. It's okay, take your time. So they had horse so wagons? We, we have, in fact, a few of us, not me, I, I, uh, they went down and got pistols and stuff, which I think they tried to get home. I mean, they didn't. Anyhow, thanks to the Black Cat Division, uh, we, uh, 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 I think we were placed on trucks and we went to Reims, France. And while we were there getting deloused, that's what they call it, because you and I have a bath for so long and we were full of stuff. That's when they signed the armistice. Okay. Uh, and I, I, I wasn't there, but this is what I heard, that we, they were there on that it's same day. Uh, from there, we went to Camp uh, Lucky Strike and uh, 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 and uh, waited uh, as prisoners of war. We had uh, second choice after wounded to go back to the states. So this was, I think, Le Havre, and we were there about a couple of weeks, and uh, were put on uh, these small ships. <laughs> There were no Mauritanias. Uh, they, they were on the sea, they would go up and down, up and down, up and down. So, and uh, we got back to the States, we got back to Ravenna, Ohio, and had a week off. Uh, a week or two, maybe a couple of weeks. And while we were there, we figured, well, they'll send us to Japan. and. Oh, one day we, the World War in Japan ended. So uh, we figured, well, we're safe from that. And besides being our given couple of weeks at home, uh, we had the privilege of going to uh, Florida and staying at, uh, at the, uh, the beach for, for a week. And, so from there, I, I didn't, you needed 60 points to get discharged. And I didn't have 60, I only had 50 points. So when we uh, went, they sent us to, to uh, Missouri, uh, to not, um, I don't let it get it. No, I didn't write it down. The fort? You mean Leonard Wood? No, no, no. Fort, fort Leonard Wood. It was where we were. This was a uh, where the um, oh, 
Yani kaza onları tutsun beni. We were there uh, with really nothing to do. I was uh, 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 honor guard, and I, I have a picture somewhere of uh, us. All, all we did was, uh, if, if we had the occasion, we, we would be an honor guard. And we were there just uh, like a couple of months, a couple of weeks. Uh, they said, well, they need somebody down in Louisiana. So uh, uh, we sent us down there to the Transportation Corps in New Orleans. And they said, what are you doing here? Uh, we said, well, they said, you need us. They said, well, we don't need you. So uh, my duties was that I was charge of quarters. Uh, every other night, and I was off every day, and the rest of the guys, I guess, I don't know what they did, but there were some of them that went to New Orleans and got uh, uh, jobs and stuff. Uh, I, the, 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 so uh, we were there, uh, I don't know, quite a while before I heard that if you were a POW, if you were a POW, and you had frozen feet, you would be eligible for a, a Purple Heart. So they said, "Well, it won't hurt. Just put in." And I had frozen foot, toes, and uh, uh, so I did, and uh, I uh, was awarded the Purple Heart. They said, and. I got my 10 points. And so I got discharged from Camp Loche in New Orleans. Uh, and I got sent home. Uh, and uh, gladly my war period was ended. So what did you do after the war? Uh, after the war, uh, I uh, went to see a counselor. And I figured I'd try to get a, 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 a job a training to be some kind of a, a, a mechanic or a, otherwise. And uh, he uh, looked at my records and stuff, uh, at my, and he says, you don't want to do that. He says, you want to go to Kent State? or to Akron. Uh, so I, I applied to Kent State because Ravenna and Kent State are seven, seven miles apart. And I could get from my house on Highland Avenue to West Main, the main street that went to Kent. Uh, I'd go there. I didn't have a car or anything. Uh, and I, Hitchhike, and I never waited long. I got I picked up seven miles, and I went to school there, and then I did reverse, going to back. And uh, uh, so I spent two years at Kent State, uh, but I wanted to go to engineering school, and I applied to several schools. One of them was, was Cincinnati, because they had uh, part of your training, your uh, experience would be that you go out and work certain less of time. And uh, they were only accepting people from Cincinnati. Oh. So uh, I uh, applied to Ohio State, and uh, they, I got accepted Ohio State. And luckily, one of the guys that I, I was uh, in some of the courses at Kent State. He was married and had a car, and he was going to Ohio State. So I hooked up with him, and we would travel back and forth together, bring our laundry home. <laughs> and uh, so we did that 
that for three more years until I graduated in industrial engineering. And, uh, uh, and he graduated and got a job in Ravenna, luckily for him. Anyhow, so after I graduated, I tried to get a job. There, at that time, I guess they had some problems again, like we normally have uh, every, what, eight, ten years, we get a depression. <laughs> And we had a little one, and, but I, I got a, a job at this arsenal that I told you about that wouldn't hire me before. Well, this time they hired me. So I was, I, I worked with them at, at this ammunition place. And my first job with them was to, to uh, get these, uh, uh, igloo, where they stored this ammunition, uh, uh, these uh, uh, cluster bombs. I guess they had had a previous accident and it exploded the whole thing and they showed me just a flat place. They said, well, we want you to set up a, 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 a place where we can uh, uh, fix the problem and, and, and uh, so that it won't happen again. And I set up a line to, to do that job. Yeah. And uh, I was with them for a while, and then they gave the arsenal to Firestone to operate. And uh, I, uh, so I went over with them, and uh, I, uh, I, I worked there a couple of years before they, I went to Ohio State. And from there, uh, I guess, um, but, uh, So were you a government employee? I, 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 I take that all back. I'm going back, I, I'm telling you the same stuff. I, I, I think you know, I got a job uh, with the General Electric and uh, uh, in uh, Circleville, Ohio. And from there, I, uh, I don't know if what happened again. I, I was transferred to Syracuse, New York. And uh, at the uh, semiconductor uh, camp that they had in there. And, uh, from there I went back to lamp making in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, and uh, uh, I retired from there in 82. And uh, uh, we were there uh, six, eight years uh, before we decided to leave there and come back up here uh, to uh, because my daughter and son-in-law were living here, and we've been here uh, almost since 94. Well, tell us a little bit about your family also. My, family. I, I, I have uh, uh, two daughters. Uh, uh, one lives here, and uh, she, she's a graduate from LSU, and, and uh, um, uh, the other daughter uh, went to Ohio State for a while uh, and then got married uh, against our will, but she was married. And uh, she's, uh, she's still in that area uh, working for herself. Uh, I have uh, uh, two granddaughters. Uh, one is a, a graduate of, uh, what's the name of the school? Okay, Cornell. And uh, she's a doctor. Um, both she and her uh, her mother are uh, Phi Beta Kappas. So they they got it from she uh, from, well, from when her son. When did you get married? When did you get married? In 1956. Okay. Uh, it was the 60. 
Well, I'm 62 years pretty soon. Uh, Congratulations. Uh, and then I had some of my grandsons uh, in, in Ohio and uh, a two great grandsons. I just have a couple of questions. Did your parents know that you were a prisoner of war? Uh, yes, they did. In fact, uh, well, no, they, they knew that I was missing. And my mother, she's a, a you know, a Catholic, and she uh, made a, 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 a vow uh, that if uh, I would be all right, she would walk from our house to the river, uh, uh, barefoot to our church. And uh, uh, this was, she didn't tell me that, uh, but, but, and she did that. And uh, I, uh, I, I contacted, when I, when I got, Liberated. If I could find it, uh, this is this is me. I, this is what. Oh, huh. Okay. This is the way we communicated. I sent that to my sister, uh, telling her, okay. tell, telling her that I was okay and I would be. Uh, While we're showing pictures, could you take out that picture of uh, of Calabria? Your, your home, your, the town where you were born? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Perfect. Okay. And Mr. Giovanasso, Tom brought this in. Yeah, that's... I wondered if you might want to talk about that. Watch your cord. Okay. Who is that? Dominic? I took Who is that? That's me. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll put it in here. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if you want to take a look at these. I just, I got a whole pile of these. I, We'll just take them all on the table, and then we'll chat about how we might maybe be able to keep these with your folder. Does any, anyone hear this? If there's anyone in particular who wants to share, absolutely. Hang on. Oh, okay. A little closer to him. A little okay. closer to him. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And then we can, we can chat after the interview about okay. how we can do that. Oops, and one more question, Mr. Jovanasso, just to kind of take you back a little bit. Okay. Do you remember where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Where I was? Uh-huh. Do you remember anything about that day? Not really. I, I remember being at home. How did your parents feel about you going into the military? I mean, I know everybody kind of did. But well, you know, my dad was in World War I. But he went with Italy went on the right side. <laughs> wow. And uh, uh, she had uh, uh, relatives, Martellis, that were in the war uh, when Mussolini was hot. And uh, they, were, they were in Africa. He was in Africa. And it's somehow or other, I don't know what they were doing, some machine uh, harvesting uh, weed or something. 
he fell into it and, and got, broke a lot of parts of his body. So they, they, they know, they, you know, they know the results of, of being in a war or being in, it, where, where it's dangerous. I understand you're a gardener. Uh, when, when we first came over from Italy, uh, we had this new, brand new house that he had built and lost because he couldn't pay the, the interest. Uh, he had a garden, and I'm eight years old, and he gave me a hoe and said, and say, hold oh, this. And he'd give me hell if I get some of the plants. So I've been doing it all my life. So you enjoy it? Yeah. It, while we were in, uh, in Mississippi, we had a, a house with a great big uh, lawn in the back. And I went to the back and I dug some holes about this big. I went and got some uh, horse manure and put it in there. And I have had about six, no, three, four plants. I had so many tomatoes on it, I, I'd go out and brag about it, and they, no one would believe me. <laughs> Even in, 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 in Syracuse, we had a little plot about as big as this table, but we, because the ground there was almost rocks and shale or something. But everywhere we went, I tried to grow something. That's great. Did you grow grapes? Did you make wine? I helped my my father make wine. They would buy uh, grapes from California, and I would help him make the wine. And he claimed he said this is it won't hurt you because it's just plain grape juice. Uh, all all of them got together. And they would get a truckload of of uh, uh, grapes. Yeah. What was your dad's occupation? What did he do for a living? He did everything he could make a buck. He, uh, he worked on the railroad for a while. He, uh, he, he worked at a, a the, the, uh, across the, from where we lived, there was a bar owned by uh, relatives of my mother, I think. So he worked there. <laughs> and he even worked as a uh, what do you call the people who make liquor without a... Oh, a bootlegger. Bootlegger. Uh, he, he, they had a house somewhere where there was two of them that would operate it. And uh, he uh, would go on and knock on the door. And when he noticed something different, he said, uh, is Mr. So-and-so here? And I said, no. It was a, so he left and never got a... <laughs> Oh, and my mother, in, the, in our little hallway, there was a cabinet that if you uh, put this wire through there, you could unlock it and, and take it out. Well, and the neighbors, I don't know if they were neighbors, the people that lived there, there come there and she would sell them a, a shot of whiskey. So, Make a buck. the most he ever made, I think, during the Depression, was like sixty dollars a month. He worked at uh, uh, any, any job he could get. Okay. Well, as we bring this to a close, I'd like to give you the opportunity just to talk or make comments or your opinion of the world or whatever. You know, just editorial time. What, it, what, what do you think about what's going on? <sighs> I don't know what to say. Uh, uh, I, I think it's, it's a shame that we as humans still fight each other, you still kill each other. For what? What, are we, what do we gain? I, I, I think the whole world is nuts. Well, you uh, saw it firsthand. I'm sorry? I said you saw it firsthand. What you're talking about, you know, the people killing each other. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's a dirty, dirty shame. We can't find a way 
to live together. Yeah. Well, and I, 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 I'm glad I never had any boys. <laughs> well, we want to thank you for participating and telling your story. It was a good story. Well, I'm sorry for all my mixed no, up. No, I, no, 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 I'm 95, and I forget. I remember somebody's name, and five minutes later, I forget it. That's all right. We're we're in our 70s, and we do the same thing. It's okay. You did a beautiful job. You did job. a good job. Yes, yeah. thank you. Thank I, you. I, I think I screwed up too many times. No, 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 no. no, no. It was Not good. even close. <laughs> thank you so much. That was wonderful.